Hi, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome to our last event on our annual road tour. Um, we're excited to be here. I think it's been a long journey for many of us, um, but also uh, an exciting day, no less. Um, I'm Catherine Zavala. I'm the COO at MedTech Innovator. And um, we will start off today with a brief intro about MedTech Innovator, and I will hand it over to Paul Grand, our CEO and founder. Um, while he's queuing up his slides, I'll ask everyone, um, especially our new attendees, if you can kindly rename yourselves. Um, so full name dash company name. That will help our flight controller make sure you're in the right room during our breakout session. So with that, uh, Paul Grant. Excellent. Thank you very much, Catherine. Um, welcome, everybody. I'm Paul Grand. I'm the CEO here at MedTech Innovator. Um, if you haven't been here before, you're in for a little bit of a treat. Um, MedTech Innovator is a very different program. It's a very different kind of competition. Um, I assume many of you have been to a bunch of pitch events. You guys have pitched tons of times to investors. Um, and to other people, and you're really used to, you know, this whole Zoom thing and presenting, and then, uh, you know, maybe you get some follow-up, maybe you don't afterwards. This is going to be very different. So for those of you who haven't been here before, um, I'm going to tell you how MedTech Innovator works. Uh, for those of you who've been here many times, um, again, you know, you can sit back, watch the intro, and then look forward to seeing the companies present um, their one-minute pitches so let me, uh, let me go ahead and share my screen, as Catherine said, and I'll tell you a little bit about MedTech Innovator and just a little bit about today's event. Um, so to begin with, one of the housekeeping things that we really need you to do um, is to make sure you rename yourself. So for those of you who have not done this already, you just click at the very bottom of your screen in Zoom. There's a thing that says participants. Click that. Your name should be the first name on the list. And if you, you can rename yourself, you can kind of hover over and click rename. Um, we want to rename you as your full name dash your company. That way, um, our flight controller for today, Ali, will be able to move you around to where you need to be. Um, so with that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about today's event. As Catherine mentioned, this is our mid-stage event today. Um, and what that means is we've been looking at a lot of companies over the last, um, last three months or so, two and a half months. Um, who pitched us and they tended to be in the early stage category because we have two different components to MedTech Innovator early and later stage. So today is going to be companies across all sectors that are what we would consider to be mid-stage, meaning generally that the companies have, have generally raised a significant amount of financing, probably a Series B, um, and, uh, and on their way to raising more. So um, it tends to be more about mid-stage and development, but they could be uh, they could be kind of across the board. So we'll see them in a minute. Um, quickly about MedTech Innovator. So we're a nonprofit. We were formed by the industry with the explicit purpose of finding great technologies and making sure they succeed in reaching patients and with the maximum value possible. So we're not trying to find people who've got an idea. Um, this is not that kind of accelerator. We're looking for people who are really far along on that journey and making sure that they succeed. Uh, at the bottom of the slide, you see some of our partners. You're going to meet them all today. Um, the representatives from all of our partners will be participating. Um, I'm even going to introduce them today so you get a chance to meet many of them. Uh, and a little bit more about the greater vision of MedTech Innovator. So we want to be, we already are the largest accelerator of the life sciences in the entire world um, with a portfolio of 340 companies. Uh, but it's not just about size in terms of the number of companies. It's about impact. Um, our companies have raised over $2.7 billion in follow-on funding. Uh, we have 78 products in the market at this point. Um, I got another clearance this morning from, um, from Mayo One, one of our alumni. Um, we had over $600 million in funding in 2020, but wait till you see what's happening in 2021. We're at a run rate to eclipse a um, billion dollars this year in follow-on funding for just 2021. Um, pretty amazing. Three funding rounds closing per week right now. Um, that's really exciting. And what I'm really, again, most excited about is your opportunity to be part of this ecosystem, to be part of the highest performing cohort of companies in early stage and mid stage med tech. Um, these are going to be, you know, you're all going to be the future leaders of this space. And now you get a chance to be part of this, this pretty exclusive group. Um, it's our ninth year doing this, so we're pretty good at it. Um, you're going to see how this works today. 
Um, but ultimately it's about the ecosystem and you're gonna get to meet a lot of those partners today. Um, now, very importantly, um, as you see below, or you see here on the slide to the left of me, where it says recognizing best in class startups, that's what, again, this is all about. Um, we had over 1,100 companies apply this year to be part of our MedTech Innovator program in the U.S. alone. Um, in total, we're at 1,800 applications across all three of our programs, um, which include the Asia Pacific and our new Biotools Innovator. Um, from the 1,100, we invited 195 to pitch. Um, we're going to see 16 of them today. 50 companies are going to be selected from that to be part of our showcase. So if you're here pitching, you got a pretty good chance of being in the showcase pool. All the companies are considered showcase companies. So for those of you, again, who are pitching today, if you're selected to advance, you will be part of our showcase program. And I'll tell you what that means in a moment. Um, we'll also have an earlier stage accelerator pool that's a subset of the showcase program. And in terms of what the resources are, well, we want you to succeed. So anything you need, we're gonna try and provide. Um, whether that's things like mentorship through introductions to our partners or others in the ecosystem, we know pretty much everybody you could possibly wanna know in this business. Um, we'll have an educational curriculum that you don't have to go to every single time, but you can tap into when you need it. Um, and again, it's all driven by the, the needs of our cohort. This is not a one-on-one bootcamp kind of a thing. Um, we have about 400 investors that are part of the MedTech Innovator ecosystem. So funding is an important thing and we're gonna make sure that people know about you when you're raising capital. Um, I mentioned the community benefits already of being part of this peer network and visibility and recognition. This is a huge part of MedTech Innovator. So as you probably know, the way this business works is you know, things happen in sequence. So someone, you know, someone acquires a company in a particular sector and everybody wants one. Um, or someone, you know, sees the possibility in a particular new area and everybody wants to be in that space. And you just need to be on everyone's radar. Um, that's a big part of what we're going to be offering here at MedTech Innovator. Uh, when we have conferences that are going to be coming up, uh, for example, the Wilson Sonsini Medical Device Conference in June, AdvaMeds Conference in September, the only people who get to present are our showcase companies. Um, no one else. You can't pay to, to find your way into those conferences. It's only if you're part of the MedTech Innovator Showcase pool. There's no equity for participation or fees to be part of this. Everything we're doing is all about just making great companies better. As I said, funded by the industry, by some of the companies I mentioned that last slide. Also, the ones you see on the bottom of the slide here. These are some of our service provider partners. And again, these are all people that you're going to have a chance to interact with throughout our program. If you see them here, they're not here just trolling for your business. They're here because they wanna help you succeed. So today is gonna to be about feedback, asking questions and more. Um, so let me move ahead then um, and introduce today's judging panel. You're gonna have a chance to interact with people from all across the industry in different capacities. Um, some of the people you see here on the screen, again, you're gonna have a chance to meet in private breakouts that are coming up. They're from some of our partners, companies. Uh, you see them all represented here on the screen. They have completely different experience sets. They have different um, areas of expertise and areas of focus. But at the end of the day, they're all pretty much experts in advancing med tech companies. Um, and by med tech, medical device, diagnostic, digital health, and so on. So this is a chance again to meet some of the people you see here on the slide today. They're all gonna be here in our rooms. Um, also uh, this slide, second slide here, again, more judges who are gonna be participating today. I think we have 80 something judges who are here. Uh, now, when I say judges, they are evaluating you, so you need to keep that in mind, but again, they're also here to give feedback. So you should expect that when you're in these breakout sessions, that people are going to be challenging you, you know, and they're not just here to say, oh, great job and clap. That's not what MedTech Innovator is about. They're here to ask questions. Sometimes the questions may be simple. Sometimes they may be hard. Just be prepared that they're all doing this because they want to have a chance Our judges, um, today we're going to have 16 companies, as I mentioned, presenting. Um, now, one of, the things that, um, one of the things that's really cool about MedTech Innovator is that we don't just have people pitch and then everyone sit back and watch. Uh, because we found that that's not really engaging, people tend to tune out. Um, instead, what we've done is we've pre-surveyed all those judges that you just saw, and they told us who they want to meet with. So today, the presenting startups, you're just going to meet in individual breakout rooms with small groups of judges who we've pre-scheduled to meet with you based on their interests. So they've told us who they wanna meet with. And that means if you're meeting with someone in the room, 
again, presenting startups, you should basically be looking at them as someone who's interested in you um, for one reason or another. It could be for an investment, could be strategic reasons, could be just they thought what your technology is, is, is interesting. But the point is you're gonna be meeting with people who are interested in you, which means these are gonna be engaging meetings. No one's just gonna sit back and take notes. You're gonna have a lot of questions fired at you, I'm sure today. Um, so these are the companies they're gonna present. Now, as I mentioned, our judges aren't able to meet individually in these groups with, with all of the companies. So we're doing a one minute lightning round where each of the presenters is gonna have a chance to present their, their slide in one minute. Um, you're gonna have a little timer in the corner. So you're gonna wanna watch that. Um, when it gets to red, you need to wrap up if you haven't already. So you get one minute to present um, and then we'll move on to the next company. We go alphabetically by company name. So prepare yourself um, depending on where you are in the alphabet. Um, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started with that. So the way this is gonna work again is that each company, um, I will queue up. All you have to do is, is read. You don't have to share your slides. I got that covered for you. Just watch the corner and, um, and watch the countdown over here uh, in the upper left in this particular slide. Um, so let's go ahead and hear first from Applaud Medical. All right, everyone. Hi, I'm Tom Kenny. I'm CEO and co-founder of Applaud Medical. Um, if you've ever had a kidney stone or someone in your family has, you know there's room for improvement in how these are handled. Um, Applaud has developed a revolutionary technology that can improve all treatments for kidney stones and other unwanted calcifications. Our acoustic enhancer is a kind of cavitation amplifier. It makes things go faster and leads to better outcomes. Uh, important points, we are regulated as a medical device. Uh, we've treated 71 subjects in human trials. Um, we're launching a pivotal trial in the U.S. on our first product this month, and we've recently closed a Series B financing uh, for $11 million just a few months ago, but we still have room for investors to join under the same terms, so I'm hoping a lot of you have brought your checkbooks and are ready to talk to me about that later today. Thank you. Boy, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing this one, uh, seeing this one succeed. Uh, 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 kidney stones are a huge problem. They run in my family and, um, and I'm looking forward to a better solution. So thanks, Tom. Uh, all right, next up, uh, we've got um, Atria CV um, with, with Dan presenting. If you wanna unmute yourself. Dan Hi, everybody. I'm Dan Gladney from Aria's VV. Aria offers the first implantable technology for the treatment of pulmonary arterial hypertension, commonly diagnosed in younger women. Despite treatment with some of the most expensive medications in our country, it remains a deadly progressive disease. Most of these patients die from heart failure or lung disease. Aria's device will help prevent this by mimic mimicking a healthy pulmonary artery, which takes the load off the right heart and lowers pulmonary pressures. ARIA's technology will change the standard of care and create a new $2.5 billion market opportunity. FDA has granted ARIA breakthrough device designation, which means our device is deemed revolutionary and has a life-saving potential. We have, we have demonstrated acute uh, safety and efficacy and kick off our EFS long-term implant study within weeks. ARIA's device is truly a market disruptive tra transformative technology. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Really, uh, really important, really impressive. Um, looking forward to hearing more during our breakouts. Um, all right, next up, we have Bluegrass Vascular, um, Gabrielle. Good morning, Gabby Niederauer. I'm CEO of the company. Placement of central venous catheters is the most frequently performed hospital procedure with over 6 million catheters placed each year. When those catheters reside in the body, they irritate the veins, leading to permanent obstructions, which is our target application. So up to 213,000 patients a year suffer from at least one symptomatic obstruction of their central veins. Our flagship product, the Surfacer System, provides a safe and effective device to repeatedly access that right central vein. It is approved in Europe, US, and Canada, de-risking the technology significantly. We have over 70 European accounts that have used the product with a 99% commercial success rate. In the US, over 80 doctors are already trained with lots of inbound requests. With the company's lean and efficient model, we've been able to accomplish this with less than $20 million and are poised for a highly profitable expansion into the US and rest of the world. Thank you. 
Thanks, Gabby. We were super impressed with the progress given the amount of money you've raised. So congratulations on that. Thank you. All right, next up, we've got Bruin Biometrics. Um, we're here uh, in Westwood ourselves, so uh, big fans of Bruins. Uh, Martin, do you wanna tell us the story? Thank you. Martin Burns here from Bruin Biometrics. I'm the CEO. Pressure ulcers are a pernicious problem that just don't seem to go away. If we pick on NY Presbyterian, in 2019, they reported nearly 11,000 pressure ulcers and they spent north of $300 million treating and preventing those ulcers to the best extent they could. Now contrast that with a client of ours in London, Chelsea and Westminster, who in using our scanner and our data system reduced their pressure ulcer incidence to zero. What we're now doing is taking our data and our platform and our technology and modernizing a chronically outdated and inefficient care pathway. Where we're going next is using those data for widespread innovation in acute and post-acute. We have a terrific partner in the form of Arjo, who put in $24 million in October of last year, and we look forward to discussing this with you today. Thank you very much, Martin. Again, super impressive. Um, great technology. I know you guys have got multiple products and looking forward to uh, hearing about them. Um, all right, next up, we've got Core Assist. Um, so this is Gideon presenting. So Gideon, if you wanna unmute. Hi, my name is Gideon Mai Brodnitz and I'm the CEO of Corsis Cardiovascular. Let me tell you about one of our first patients. He was diagnosed with severe diastolic heart failure and his prognosis was very poor. He volunteered to be implanted with the Corolla, the first and only passive assist device. After his implantation, he started feeling better, and as time went by, his heart failure condition improved dramatically. He regained his ability to become physically independent and stopped visiting the hospitals to receive medical care. This patient is only one out of 50% of the heart failure population, which have no real treatment for their condition. Until now. This true story motivates us all in courses to push forward to becoming the next standard of care, addressing this huge unmet need. So please join me today, the next sessions where I'll be presenting courses and, I'll, and our next steps ahead. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you very much, Gideon. Um, super uh, great patient-centered story. Thank you uh, for telling us that. Uh, looking forward to hearing more. Um, all right, next up, um, we have Echo. Um, so this is going to be Naveen presenting. Hi there, my name is Naveen and I lead partnerships on behalf of ECHO. Um, cardiopulmonary diseases are the number one source of mortality in the world. And although treatments exist for most major conditions, high quality utilization of the ubiquitous frontline tool for these conditions, the stethoscope is inconsistent and falls short. We at ECHO have reinvented the stethoscope, building devices that offer unparalleled sound quality so physicians can hear sound more clearly, artificial intelligence that aids clinicians in their detection of, the, of abnormalities, and software that stitches the whole platform together to allow for data storing and monitoring, assisted interpretation, e-consults, telemedicine, and remote care. More than 70,000 clinicians use our products today, and our goal is to take the de facto symbol of medicine, stethoscope, bring it to the modern era, and transform it into a tool that helps clinicians better detect and manage the world's most common conditions and better care for their patients. Excellent. Thank you, Naveen. Um, you know, I just keep saying it again, but super impressive. We've been watching Echo from the very beginning. Uh, amazing to see the progress in a category that, you know, lots of people, you know, would say, uh, oh, there's two or three or four, whatever company in this space, but Echo always rises to the top. So excited to have you guys here presenting today. Thanks, Naveen. Um, all right, next up, um, we have Helionics. Um, Mike is gonna tell us the story, Mike. Thanks, I'm Mike Conley, CEO of Helionics. We're commercializing a novel synthetic blood vessel focused on providing safer, more reliable dialysis access in patients who have kidney failure. We've completed a successful first human study and we're in a follow-on human study now, and we expect FDA clearance by early next year. Our synthetic blood vessel is based on a platform biomaterial technology, which has a really unique ability to resist two, infection, two problems that affect all implantable devices, infection and scarring. 
So there's a wide variety of pipeline products and following applications. We have 33 patents issued or pending. And our product pipeline includes a needle-free dialysis access port, which will be critical for facilitating patients doing dialysis at home, and an infection-resistant catheter cuff, which is critical for new patients who typically start dialysis on catheters. Our management team has over 80 years experience in the medical device industry, and we have a stable of world-renowned advisors in the clinical, scientific, and industry realms. So I look forward to sharing more about the story later today. Thanks. Thanks very much, Mike. I mean, again, such an area of need, uh, you know, this is just one of the biggest areas for failure and, and seeing your technology and the, the promise of it is very, very exciting. So really happy to have you here. Thanks. All right, next we've got Innovise Medical. Um, so uh, Tim Wheeler is gonna tell us the story. Yeah, sure. So um, Innovise, uh, we're a seasoned group of, of engineers and marketing executives. We originally spun out of HP Medical. Um, we've been working on a new technology for heart failure monitoring. Uh, methods simple, it's proven, patented, cost effective. Um, and over the past few years, we've been mostly partnering with larger companies, uh, embedding our technology into their existing products. Um, but we feel the market conditions are just ideal in the US now for us to launch our own product. Um, towards that goal, we've uh, developed hardware and software to support a, a patient operated remote monitoring use model. Um, and we took that model and our existing clinical proof to the FDA received breakthrough designation like a lot of the companies here. Um, we're now looking for financial and strategic support uh, to, in order to commercialize the product, um, including manufacturing and a, a large scale uh, multi-site US-based trial. Fantastic. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I, I, again, really, really excited about uh, the opportunity for this particular category, you know, having patients do this themselves at home and monitoring is a place that we're all looking towards. So great stuff. Very excited. Um, all right. Next up, we've got Neosis. Um, Alan. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I'm Alon Moses, CEO and co-founder of Neosys. Uh, we build robotic surgery systems for the dental industry. So the dental industry is going through a digital revolution where the holy grail is a completely digital dental workflow. The biggest segment within the dental industry is dental implant surgery, which right now is done primarily freehand. They drill a hole and hope they get it right without hitting the nerve or perforating the sinus. With our expertise in robotic surgery, we found a perfect match for our style of robotic surgery, haptic robotics, to be applied to this dental implant procedure and to the dental industry more broadly. Uh, so we've uh, been able to raise, you know, initially just $7 million to get us through FDA clearance from angel investors like Fred Mall, who created the Da Vinci Robot at Intuitive Surgical. Since then, we've been able to raise an additional uh, more than $100 million to commercialize the system. So we've now completed more than 5,000 implants and continuing to grow this into a true digital dental platform. Thank you. Uh, I, again, digital, digital technology is revolutionizing the space. I was at the dentist uh, this week. Um, I'm looking forward to digital dental um, uh, offices in general and digital procedures. So, you know, looking forward to this. I've been following the EOSIS since the very, very, very beginning. Um, always been impressed with what you guys have been doing. And, uh, and it's in a space that typically, you know, we think of med tech and not a lot of people think of dental. It doesn't pop into your head right away. Um, but, but seeing the need for innovation in that particular category is huge. Um, we've been lucky enough to have some dental partners at MedTech Innovator now. Um, and in general, um, really impressed and really excited about what you guys are doing. So great work. Um, all right. Next up, we have uh, Narami Medical. Um, so that's going to be um, Nora presenting. Nora, can you hear me? So you're unmuted, but I don't hear you, Nora. Hi. There you go. I can hear you. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Tell us. Tell us the story. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yes. Great. So over 1 billion patients suffer from damages to their soft tissues, either by trauma or by disease. Soft tissues include crucial organs such as our skin, lungs, brain, and more. The current state of the art is based on the use of two separate products, and yet there are still up to 30% of complications. I'm Nora. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Norama Medical. 
My team and I developed the first multifunctional implant to repair the soft tissue that surrounds the brain. It is the only solution to provide two functions in a single device, healing and sealing. Its nanofiber structure enhances tissue healing, whereas the built-in sealant prevents leakages of fluids. We raised up to now $10 million, completed a safety trials in human, and currently in the middle of the pivotal clinical study to obtain clearance in 2022. We seek to raise additional $10 million that will take us all the way through commercialization and sales in 2023 that are expected to reach $63 million in, within three years. So I will be happy to talk more about Nurami in the next session. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nora. Really, really great story. The, the combination of sealing and regeneration is what piqued everyone's interest. So uh, looking forward to hearing more. Uh, all right, next up we have Ocon Healthcare um, and that's gonna be Karen. Hi everybody, uh, I'm Karen. I'm the CEO of Ocon Healthcare. I'm leading a fantastic women's health company. We deliver drugs to the uterus. We have the first and only 3D platform technology for various indications such as heavy or abnormal menstrual bleeding, uterine fibroids, cancers, endometriosis. We deliver an array of hormonal therapies also used for menopause. So finally, there's a product for women by women shaped to fit our uh, specific anatomy. Our little ball is safer, better tolerated and market validated in over 100,000 women, including myself. Uh, we sell uh, today the Ballerine in over 30 markets around the world. We recently won a very prestigious Frost and Sullivan Award for leadership innovation. We're very proud of that. And we have a strong patent portfolio that is granted. And we basically own the 3D space in the uterus. I would love to elaborate more on our current round and our plans moving forward to bring this technology to the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you, Karen. Um, I have a really close friend who just had an eight pound fibroid removed um, in the last week. So. Looking forward to uh, this solution, and I'm glad you guys own the 3D space. That sounds pretty, pretty cool. Uh, all right, next up, we have Universal Diagnostics. Um, that's going to be Christian. Thank you, Paul. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Christian, um, Managing Director of Universal Diagnostics. 40% of all of us in this call will develop cancer in their lives. That's a true global pandemic. The only thing that really helps against that is early detection and early prevention. That's what universal diagnostics is all about, making cancer a curable disease by detecting it early with a blood-based test. And we're tapping into a 50 billion US dollar market opportunity here. The first cancer we've ta we're tackling is colorectal cancer, where we're going to present breakthrough results later on in ASCO in the beginning of June, and we'll give you a sneak preview of that uh, in our breakout sessions. We do that with a very proprietary liquid biopsy approach based on an NGS assay. We are delighted to present at MedTech Innovator where we're looking for contacts to investors for our upcoming round of 100 million US dollars, commercial partners, and of course, build our brand. Thank you so much. Thank you, Christian. Thank you. Oh, look, no pressure, but we're counting on you to not have 40% the people on this call um, wind up with, uh, with any kind of an impact from cancer. So glad you're here. Um, Thank you. All right, next up um, from VentureMed Group, um, we're gonna be having uh, Bob present. Great, thanks Paul. <clears throat> I'm Bob Paulson, CEO of VentureMed. A common unmet clinical need for end-stage renal disease patients with arterial venous fistula for dialysis access and patients suffering from peripheral arterial disease is consistent and predictable revascularization of occluded vessels with minimal vessel trauma complications and sustained vessel patency. The accessible market in the US for these two segments exceeds two and a half billion dollars. The historical standard of care has been balloon angioplasty with atherectomy frequently used in peripheral lesions. Both devices demonstrate high rates of vessel dissection, often requiring stents to repair, and vessels with dissections and stents reocclude at a significantly higher rate, requiring reintervention. Our flex vessel prep system is fundamentally different. Dynamic circumferential controlled depth microincisions that's simple, a single device modifies complex stenoses and lesions of any length, safe, minimizing the extent and severity of dissections, reducing the need for stenting, and effective and efficient. Fewer complications mean shorter, less costly procedures and sustained vessel patency. 
Thank you very much, Bob. Boy, that vessel prep technology is really cool. Um, I was super impressed by, uh, by what you guys have developed uh, and uh, we think it's gonna have a big impact. So glad to have you guys here today. All right, next up, we've got Vizcardia. Uh, that's gonna be Peter presenting. So Peter, if you wanna go ahead and unmute. Yeah, no, thanks, Paul. Um, so hi, I'm Peter Bauer, CEO of uh, Viscardia. Um, well, as you know, heart failure is a complex disease with a severe impact on patients' quality of life. And in many cases, medical treatment alone is not sufficient to keep patients from being hospitalized frequently. So at Viscardia, we are a team of experts coming from the implantable medical device space. And our mission is to address that existing gap in uh, chronic heart failure treatment options. So for that, we have developed a novel therapy concept that recruits the respiratory diaphragm as a cardio circulatory assist to improve, improve uh, blood circulation and to reduce the stress of the failing heart. Our technology received breakthrough device status from the FDA. And with that, we are on an expedited regulatory and uh, reimbursement pathway for the US market. So appreciate your interest in learning more about Viscardia and how our technology will be able to impact the lives of patients. And I look forward to seeing you in the breakout sessions. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Peter. Super, again, really, really important area. Congratulations on uh, the breakthrough designation. Um, I could say that to almost all the companies here today, a lot of breakthrough designations, but congratulations on that. Really looking forward to learning more about Viscardia in the breakouts. Uh, all right. Uh, next up, we have Wellinks, um, and that's going to be Jeff presenting. Thanks, Paul, and hi, everybody. Uh, this is Wellinks. My name is Jeff Matus. I'm the President and Chief Commercial Officer, and Wellinks is building virtual first COPD care. There's 25 million Americans that suffer from COPD, leads to $50 billion in costs, comes from $25,000 every time they walk through the door of the emergency room, up to $45,000 when they're admitted to the floor. And 15 to 20% of those patients are going to come back to the hospital within 30 days. Why? Because COPD care is fragmented and it's inconsistent. Um, unfortunately, in the rush of virtual care, COPD has been left behind by the companies that are focusing more on the employer model for commercialization. There's a huge need here. So we're building the first fully integrated COPD solution around the patients who need it. It starts with connected devices, including the company's FDA cleared first smart nebulizer called Flip, includes a patient-centered app that's easy to use, coaching that meets patients where they are, and pulmonary rehabilitation to keep people moving and healthy outside the hospital system. We recently completed our first clinical study where we had a mean age of 80 in patients with advanced disease. We showed 100% engagement over eight weeks and 95% satisfaction. We're moving into our first integrated delivery network partnership focus on research and commercialization. Happy to be here, thanks. Jeff, happy to have you here. Uh, 360 Care and COPD is just exactly what we need. So really looking forward to hearing more about this one. Uh, all right, and then next up and last in our presenting for the lightning round is Wishbone Medical. Um, and that is gonna be Nick presenting. Hi, I'm Nick Dieter. I'm the founder and CEO of Wishbone Medical. Wishbone's actually my 12th company like this. Um, and this is my second pediatric orthopedic company. My uh, previous pediatric venture was orthopediatrics, now trading on the NASDAQ at over $1.1 billion market cap. And Wishbone is the new and improved version. Wishbone Medical makes anatomically appropriate implants for children and couples those implants with instruments in single use sterile packaged procedural kits for both trauma, um, deformity correction, also in scoliosis and sports related injuries. In three more years, uh, Wishbone will be the market leader in a $3.2 billion underserved market where 95% of the implants that go into children today are not approved by the FDA for use in pediatrics. We're uh, seeking growth capital to grow our year-on-year -year sales in excess of 40%. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. And pediatrics is a huge area of need. We, we spent a lot of time in pediatrics here at MedTech Innovator. Um, been running a pediatric program for several years now and uh, are thrilled to be able to do that. Orthopediatrics is a very important company and um, congratulations on, uh, on that one. And um, I'm glad to see you again. 
So great to have you here. All right, so those are our presenting companies for today. Um, if, you, uh, if you're here and you, um, and you, for some reason, did not learn about all these companies in advance, there's two ways to do that. In addition to the slides that you just saw and the opening, um, there's also a bio book. So if you look in the, um, the chat, you will see um, a bio book that tells you, uh, if you click on the link for that, It'll um, tell you about every single one of the people who are here today. Um, it's divided up between our judges and partners and um, also the presenting companies. I encourage you to look through that. Um, startups over the next five or so minutes while I go quickly through this um, form for the judges, if you wanna flip through the bio book, you can learn a little more about some of the people who you're gonna be meeting with today. Uh, you can look at their bios, little short backgrounds on them, um, as well as the bios on the other presenters, which is a great way to get to know others who are here. Um, you guys are all some of the top companies, emerging companies in our space. So for our judges, let me just walk you through quickly how to do this. Um, this is our last pitch event, which means if you've been judging for us, you've done this many, many times. If this is your first time judging, I'm going to go through this quickly for you too. Uh, so here's the companies that are presenting today. Judges, you have a form that was sent to you, a link to uh, use over and over again for each company that you're meeting with. You just click the little radio button next to the company's name. Um, when you start your meeting with them, you have that maybe in another tab in your browser um, or somewhere. Um, oh, we only have one slide on that. Uh, is that right? Yes, it is. Okay. Well, um, judges, I'm just going to quickly then tell you the rest of it uh, without the slide. So, um, so the first thing you do is you click the name of the company. Then there's a little box where you can enter your notes, write your notes in that box. We're going to be emailing you all of your notes and comments and scores at the end. Um, then there's a, a box that says feedback. That's very important. We want you to put any anonymous feedback that you have on the companies in that box. Um, that's going to be sent to the companies after the event. So whatever comments you put in there, startups, you're going to have a chance to, and emerging companies, you're going to have a chance to get written feedback after today's event. Um, you might be meeting with 15 or 20 different people. So you're going to have comments, hopefully from all of them. Um, so this is where we encourage you judges to write down some, some comments there. These could be things that, you know, you might say, you know, your business model is a little, you know, confusing or, um, you know, or I suggest maybe you consider doing something different. Tell us, tell them what that is. Any feedback you want to give the companies, slide on competition was missing competitors, whatever, whatever feedback you want to give, um, constructive or, um, or just praise, um, either one. So put comments in that feedback box. Those will be anonymous. So startup, you'll know it was an investor or strategic or other, but it won't tell you who it was. Um, the scores will be sent along with that. There's a series of score boxes. One is the weak score, 10 is the strong score, or one is the weak score, and or five is the strong score, depending on the question being asked. Um, we ask you to evaluate companies in terms of the, the technology and its ability um, to be successful. Um, overall, that's what we're kind of looking for is, is metrics for success. Um, startups, again, what we're looking for is for you to be successful, and we want to know overall. How likely is this opportunity to be successful? We want to know um, how, how likely are some of the contributing factors um, to being successful. Where we ask for team evaluations, we're asking not just for the presenter evaluation, but the overall team. Um, last thing I'll mention as well for our judges, when you submit the form at the end, um, there's a submit button. If you're out of time and you need to go into your next company and you haven't had a chance to finish filling in your comments, you can click the save as draft button that will put the form up in the corner of your browser. So you'll see it on the side. There'll be a number like one if this is the first time you've saved the draft. Um, if you need to go back and edit that draft, you just click that number. It'll expand and you'll see the saved form. You can finish it and then submit it. Um, at the end of the day, again, I'm going to email all of the scores and comments to our judges so that you can have them in front of you when we do our deliberation at the end of the day. Very important. I want to make sure I mention again um, one more time that today is, is a an event that is part of a partnership. So all the companies that you see here on this screen um, who are here in person today, um, as well as many others who are here today, um, are here um, not just because they're funding MedTech Innovator, they're here because they wanna help you succeed. They wanna see these products reach the market with as much value as possible. I know some of you are already on the market. We wanna make you even more successful at that. Um, so that's what today is about. Today is about feedback. Today is about having a chance to get to know you better. Um, so don't take it, um, don't be insulted if people are, are asking you questions that you feel like, oh, we're doing really well. Why are you asking me this question? Uh, the whole point is 
we want to challenge you. We want to make sure that, you know, we understand what you're doing and why, and how can we help you in that process? And ultimately that's what this is all about is having products reach patients. So that's um, our introduction. Um, as I mentioned before, very importantly, there's a lot of great people who are here um, in the, uh, the, the room, the Zoom today. Um, you're going to have a chance again to meet with many of them, but not all of them. So if there's somebody that you want to meet with uh, and you, you aren't scheduled to meet with them and they, they, you don't have a chance to do so, but you know somewhere during today you hear about them or you see them or you're aware that they're here, you can look in the bio book and the link that we put in the chat. It has contact information, both if we have their LinkedIn profile, you'll be able to click on the name that'll take you to the LinkedIn profile, um, or there'll be an email address that you can use to reach out um, and, and follow up with somebody. And again, startups, I encourage you to follow up with each other. You guys are all um, advanced companies. You've raised significant capital. Um, and although, yes, you've done that, it's always challenging to raise capital. There's always, you can always do better. Um, so please reach out to each other. You know, um, most of you aren't competitive and it'd be really nice for you to refer each other uh, to investors if you guys think um, it's worth referring. So that's, that's what today is all about. Um, I'm gonna introduce a couple members of the MedTech Innovator team quickly so you'll know them if they show up in your rooms. Again, you're gonna be in breakout rooms um, and there's gonna be five sessions. So during these five sessions, um, you'll be in a room with a series of um, evaluators, judges, experts. Um, they're not there to award a prize today. They're there to listen to you, to give feedback, um, ask some questions. Um, and then we're all gonna be talking at the end of the day. So um, they're there to gather intelligence. Um, if you're talking to some of our, our professionals on the regulatory and reimbursement side, they're going to ask you questions about your, your market access plans um, and your regulatory plans, and they're going to contribute that, that feedback later as we're talking about the companies. So again, you know, everyone's here with a purpose. Um, if the people are uh, investors, you know, they might want to invest in your company, but they also will give us feedback based on what they've heard and what else they know. And the same thing for our strategics and others. So understand that, that everyone's here um, because, you know, again, we're all trying to understand these companies and understand how, what you're doing and what we can do to help. So that's the basics. Um, each session is 20 minutes. Um, in those 20 minute sessions, very important, do not give a 20 minute PowerPoint presentation. That is not what the 20 minutes are for. Um, these, pre these presentations have all been sent in advance to the judges. So they've hopefully looked at them in advance um, and generally know the story. You still want to run through your slides, but the point is go through it quickly. Um, don't waste too much time on the, on the problem. If it's congestive heart failure, it's probably a safe bet that the people who are listening, you know, understand congestive heart failure and so on. Um, maybe dental robotics, you need to spend a little more time in the OSIS on that. But for the most point, uh, the most part, uh, the point is that people understand these areas of need. Um, so run through your slides quickly, um, ex you know, get through them so that we can get to questions as quickly as possible. There'll be hopefully around 15 minutes of time for Q&A. Uh, and, uh, and judges, very importantly, I want to make sure that our strategics, who are our corporate partners, get a chance to ask their questions. So, um, so, so judges, I know everyone wants to jump in and ask questions, but please make sure if you've got some of our strategic partners in the room, give them a chance to ask their questions. Um, you know, I, we have really smart people who are going to be asking questions, but we don't want you to monopolize, monopolize the time. Make sure our corporate partners have a chance to ask their questions so that we can have a good discussion at the end of the day. Um, so that is the ground rules. Uh, each session will be 20 minutes. We'll come back here in between for short breaks in between where you can take a break, stretch, or get a chance to meet some of the people who we're going to introduce. Um, there will be one break um, after the third round that will be a completely true break where we're going to turn off the cameras and everyone can take a, a five minute break. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. Looking forward to uh, seeing some of you guys in the next five sessions. I'll be in one of the rooms. Um, quickly, again, um, let me introduce a couple of our team members. So Catherine, um, you got to meet in the beginning. Catherine Zavala, our COO. Um, also, Brian Benson is here. Uh, Brian, you want to say hello? Hi, everybody. Welcome to our second to last round of Met, our MedTech Innovator Road Tour. Looking forward to hearing the presentations today and hopefully getting a chance to meet uh, most of the companies. Thanks, Brian. Um, also, uh, I, I mentioned Allie before. So, uh, Allie Zimnock, you want to say hello? Hi everyone, uh, I'm Ali Zanak, uh, Startups. I have been the one who has been emailing you 
Um, please let us know if you have any questions on anything today. I'll be manually assigning everyone into breakout rooms. Thank you, Allie. And yes, we'll be manually assigning people to breakout rooms. Um, Allie's got to move a lot of people around from round to round. Um, and that's one of the reasons for those five minute breaks. So thank you, Allie, for that. Um, next, uh, Jerry. I want to say hello, Jerry. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jerry. I'm Allie's counterpart for marketing and events with MedTech Innovator. Um, if you have any questions today about the event or any issues, um, you can send me a chat or I also have my number, my phone number in my username. Um, you can text me and I can help you get settled. All right. Um, thank you, Jerry. Um, make sure you text him if you're really having a problem, with audio or otherwise. Um, next up, Uni K. Hi everyone, I'm Uni. I'm a senior fellow at MedTech Innovator. Really excited to be here and good luck to everybody pitching today. Thank you, Uni. Um, Glenn? How's it going? My name is Glenn Marowitz. Uh, really excited just based on the one minute pitches to get to learn a lot more about the companies today. Uh, good luck to everyone who's here. Thank you very much. Uh, Eugene? Hi everyone, I'm Eugene, a fellow at MedTech Innovator. I'm excited to hear about all of the pitches and happy to facilitate conversations too. Excellent. So that's our team who's here today. Um, they may be in one of your rooms. If they are, they might ask questions. They might help moderate the discussion if needed. As I said, I'll be in one of the rooms too. Um, so that's it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start our first session. Uh, have fun and uh, we'll see you guys back here in 20 minutes. Thank you, Allie.